Okay. Howdy. <laughs> so yeah, so I'll speak a little bit about well DAOs, but really a simpler, the simplest version of DAOs, which I would like to call collaborative networks. And it may be more friendly name for them, let's just call them commons. I want to say that a lot of my thinking, well, I'm, I'm, I was inspired by many people, but this specific talk, a lot, of, a lot of this thinking is inspired by Griff Green that is maybe somewhere here. So I want to say that. Okay, so let me, let me start with a question. Who uh, in the audience thinks that capitalism is just perfect as is? Nothing to be changed? And let's just continue rolling in the same direction. Please raise your hands. I mean, I'm not. Okay, great. Thank you. And just to ensure that you're not totally sleeping, who thinks that some change, maybe capitalism is great, but some change needs to be implemented? Please raise your hand. Okay, so half of you is sleeping, but that's still we have a majority. I, I'll tell you what I think. So I think that capitalism is is amazingly simple and yet effective, acknowledging. It's so simple that any school child can understand that, right? People, they have needs um, and they are willing to pay money to get their needs, so to get goods, products, services, anything that they capture as being good. Now, those um, that willing is creating a business opportunity for new ventures to emerge, satisfies and satisfies those willings and offer goods, right? And two outcomes comes out of that. One is that there's constant creation of goods, of good things, as people perceive them. And secondly, those who are involved in those uh, ventures, they make money and they can use that money to purchase more goods. So we have this incredibly simple cycles that const constantly spills out, spits out good things. What a good coordination mechanism, indeed. Now, one thing to observe, if you look at the typical benefit distribution of such a venture, of this cycle, typically there will be a few very large beneficiaries, right? And many, many, many small ones. Now that's clear because those, the few large beneficiaries are those who are taking most of the risk and the effort. So it makes a lot of sense that there are large beneficiaries. It, it's making a lot of sense to reward them, right? And also it's good incentive, it's incentivized people to take risk and make effort, which is a good thing. In fact, in, in, in actual um, benefit distribution, there's also negative beneficiaries. So if you are building a very large tall building, you are probably blocking my view, so I'm harmed by this venture. So there are negative beneficiaries, but you know what, never mind, put them aside. Um, secondly, these distributions, they have artifacts. I think we feel them, and it's, it's a whole other talk to explain the, the failure modes of those uh, distributions. But even, even put that aside, let's just, let, let's just assume that these distributions are just fine as they are, okay? Still, they are definitely not representing the whole space of distributions. Definitely, there are distributions just like that, right? I would call them democratic benefit distributions. Causes, ventures, right? Causes, achievements, society achievements such that from which everyone kind of benefit the same, or kind of benefit a little bit, right? We have plenty of those all, all over the place, all around us, and we call them public goods, public commons, I'm not sure if, if that's the right title. Um, and why don't we see more of this? Like, why they are more rare than the centralized distributions? It's obvious, because there is no one person that has the incentive to pull them off. So in the game theory aspect of things, we will just see less of those and more of those, but not because they are worse, just because there is no good incentive. How could we fix that rig? So. States, municipalities, and NGOs have been engineered basically to take care of public or democratic distributions, benefit distributions, right? But unfortunately, two things. One, states, municipalities, and NGOs, as you all know, 
are way less effective than the free market ventures. And for the same reason, because there is no one person or five people that have really strong incentive to make it work. So that's one. Secondly, they are, because of their centralization with respect to the market, they are highly, highly manipulable and corruptible. And in fact, you all know corrupted, right? So these are two problems. So how could we fix that? I'm saying we could fix that if we had a machinery to produce those democratic distributions such that everyone benefit a little and at the same time everyone contribute a little. Now, of course, the problem is that if everyone or a lot of people are contributing a little bit, we are opening a coordination problem, right? So now we have million contributions, little contributions. We need organizational principle, a new kind of organizational principle to aggregate all those contributions into a meaningful action. And that's what DAO is about. But I would call them collaborative networks because collaborative networks are a simpler version of DAOs that can aggregate millions of actions of real people, not professional, not engineers, just me and you, into a meaningful action. So these will be collaborative networks or just commons. So what's missing is the coordination tool for the commons and that's what I want to present to you, an, an app, a simple app that is called the common app and I'll show you that through an example. So Daniel, he's a young guy, he just graduated from uh, his bachelor degree in computer science, if you wanna, if you wanna know. Um, and he always dreamed to meet the jungles. So he always dreamed to reach the roots of the Amazon. So after bachelor, he, he saves some money, he buys a one-way ticket and he gets on a plane. So in there, in Lima, Peru, he finds a tourist guide which takes him to the primary jungle. So the primary jungle is where the trees have never been cut before. It's the level of livelihood there is, is, is much more than anything we are, we are experiencing today. So in that lively environment, he's so, he, he feels such an experience with nature that he has a decision at that moment that he's gonna dedicate effort to save the Amazon rainforest. Great, he goes back to the hostel in Lima. He thinks to himself, what can I do? If I could just buy it all, I would protect that, but clearly I don't have the money. Um, well, surely people have thought of that before, right? So he opens his Facebook account and, and look for you know, corresponding groups. He indeed find four different Save the Amazon Rainforest exclamation mark groups. And he enters all of them. And there he finds quite an inspiring thing. He finds many thousands of people who share the same passion as he and lively discussions and ideation and excitement, but none of those groups really trigger any meaningful action. They just can't. So he's frustrated. He writes to his friend, to his, friend, to his best friend, which tells him you don't, there is just this app, this new app called the Common App, which is just for that. It, to, it, it served to self-organize movement around shared causes. So he quickly download that app launch it and open, open an account and browse in. Inside, for example, he finds the free Hong Kong movement, so it's a, or, or common, so it's a 25,000 people movement that just raised uh, donations of $1 million. He finds a group of about 1,000 people that are promoting vegan uh, dishes in Tel Aviv, and he found this insane meetups and events network that is called DAOFest. So he looks inside Vegan TLV to find out which kind of actions you know, they, can, they can trigger. So for example, one, one proposal he, he's just gonna pass in a few hours. Um, he, Amanda, is, she's proposing to allow all uh, restaurants in Tel Aviv that have at least uh, uh, 10 vegan dishes uh, in their menu to post advertisement freely on this group homepage. Wow, that's, very, that's very powerful. He, he finds another proposal to promote Facebook, in Facebook campaign, to promote this group and grow it further. He finds a proposal to fund a vegan night by a famous chef, and so on and so forth. So, as you can feel, Daniel starts to develop his own appetite. So, in just two, minute, just two minutes, he clicks, with a few clicks of a button, he opens the Amazon network, he picks the slogan, if you want to save the Amazon, own it. He chooses $10 to be the minimal 
donation membership fee. So if you want to be part of that group, you need to donate $10. Uh, and he also chooses $5,000 to be the, the first funding goal, uh, only after which the common can use the funds. And just before going to sleep, he's just quickly sharing a link of that app, and specifically the Amazon network, to all of those Facebook groups that he joined before, and his friends, and he goes to sleep. And early in the morning, he finds out that 97 new members have just joined the app, er, sorry, just joined, joined the Amazon network, but which also means that they've just raised their first $1,000. Amazing. It happens that one of those people uh, was Jake, and he opens the app, he, gets, he opens the Amazon network, he gets this big button request to join, he just clicks it, and by that he transfers $10 uh, uh, to the common, conditionally, and then people vote on his uh, uh, membership, he's been voted up, and after a couple of hours he's a member, and the $10 is donated to the common. Now, Jake, he's a very successful blog blogger, he has more than 3,000 followers, so he quickly writes a blog post telling about this new amazing tool, and this, like, incredible network that is just growing up rapidly and is also posting a quick post in the app telling about that blog post in Medium. And a few hours later in the evening, there are 624 new members in the, in the Amazon network. Which is great because it means that they've just reached their funding goal of $5,000 and they can just use the app. Which is great because Michelle, that follows Jake, she has a marketing agency and she just offered, in two minutes she offers you know what, I'll just make a, a, a Facebook campaign uh, that will be funded with, for, for $200 um, to grow further the group. So Daniel is very excited about that. He upvotes that proposal and he's happy to discover just a few hours later that that proposal got approved. The $200 automatically go, goes to Michelle. She started a campaign and it goes on and on. I think you get the gist. In just a few weeks, uh, the Amazon network grows to 64,000 members, raise about a million of dollars, and also the first uh, proposal comes up to start purchase lands in the Amazon to protect from deforestation. Three months after Daniel celebrating a post in the Amazon network describing all of the achievements uh, of that common, in particular purchasing significant portion of lands in uh, Peru, Brazil, Ecuador, and Bolivia. Now, all of this started just with Daniel's journey to the Amazon and the passion that he encountered there for a certain cause, um, but also with connecting with the same passion seeded in many, many thousand others with a very simple tool for coordination, funding, and pursuing that cause. So this was just one example, and you can now think of many, many others um, it can be global ones, or it can be uh, local ones. For example, it can be local festivals organized by, by thousands of people, uh, event networks, political campaigns, corporate fight uh, against uh, local pollution. It can be people just planting forests together or founding parks. It can be large pur purchasing groups, think one million people making a purchase group and then going together to a seller company to get a better deal. W wouldn't they get it? Growing awareness, marketing, urban, urban projects, education networks, content, and really uh, what not. And the common denominator of those DAOs or crowding networks is that, one, they are simple, simple action, simple to engage with, little dependency between different decisions. They are very large scale, so they start from hundreds, but they can really range to millions. Once you, des once you design the setup to be very, very simple, there is actually no limit of the size of these uh, uh, organizations, of the commons. It's designed for mainstream, it's not for, for niche market, not for professional markets, it's designed for uh, anyone here in the audience and in other audiences. And it's designed to be social because movement, although they have purpose, they are largely social, of people who want to be part of something bigger than them, but really be part of that, not, not be exploited, and connecting with people. So maybe here I pose for two minutes and I want to ask sincerely, like really honest, um, who thinks right now, and it's, for me it's just like a, a, a user research, right? Who thinks that they would use this app or is waiting for that app to, launch, to be launched to use it in, let's say, three months? Who'd use it? Amazing. 
Thank you very much. Who is, anyone is willing to share what will be your common? Anyone? One. Yes, please. You have a microphone just next to you. Fight against gerrymandering. Okay. I'm from Israel, so I don't understand that, but <laughs> thank you. Nevertheless, honestly. Um, anyone else wanna, wanna say what's their cause? What's their common they, they will found? I actually have a question. Um, yeah. How do you control the use of the funds? Is there some mechanism in it? How you do, can you repeat that? Can you, can you repeat? How, how do you control the use of the funds once the fundraising is done, for oh, example? Oh, so, so, so the funds are held by a collective wallet on the, on the Ethereum blockchain. And anyone, any member in that common can make any proposal to use of that fund. And they should probably follow. There's, every such common has an agenda, which is also agreed by the people. It can continuously change and voted for. And you can make a proposal to support that agenda, right? And then anyone in the common can vote about the proposal. And once there is, there is certain governance rules, decision rules, which I will not get into, but if you, you, maybe you heard about this thing called holographic consensus, it gets there. Basically, it allows the commons to make fast decisions with, with little, little uh, uh, number of voters, but which still reflect the, the bigger majority. So that's holographic consensus. And then once something is approved, the, the fund just automatically goes to the proposer. Or, or actually, whoever beneficiary he was proposing to manage those funds. Any other question? Okay, so I'll just move on. Almost done. <clears throat> so actually, the story about Daniel is based on a real one. So this is Noni. Meet Noni. Noni is a good friend of mine. And about 15 years ago, he went to the Amazon, and he had just that moment. In the primary jungle, he experienced such a level of livelihood that at that moment, he decided he's de literally dedicating, dedicating his life to save the rainforest. And he did. Over a decade, he lived in Costa Rica. He founded the biggest ecological movement in Costa Rica, and he educated more than 100,000 kids in there and created really a global movement. The problem, though, is that there are not enough nonis. Let's face that. There are not enough people, their passion of which is so strong that they are willing to put everything else in life, including family, and dedicate their life to a cause. And Daniel, in three months, could achieve the same level of impact and more just by connecting his little passion with the little passion of many, many other thousands and with a simple coordination tool, the common app, which brings really back the power to the commons. So let me, let me end here. Thank you. Um, one more comment not related. If you are a DAO stock hacker, probably you are hacking, but nevertheless, if you are a DAO stock hacker and you're not hacking, then please know that at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. at the workshop space, floor 4.5, uh, everyone getting together uh, to ask questions, resolve issues, and so on. Any questions? Okay, so thank you very much. <laughs>